Hello and welcome to this Extreme IO video covering the new Zio 6.3 feature Native Synchronous Replication. In this video, we will discuss the Extreme IO native support for replication, review the order of operations for synchronous replication, and then close it with a demonstration showing how to configure and manage it. As technology progresses, companies are generating increasing amount of data and require the data to be easily accessible and highly reliable. Storage and IT administrators are also challenged with keeping the data available in the face of natural disaster, power loss, and network failures. Losing access to a LAN or file system is simply not an option. To this end, data replication is an adequate solution for storing concurrent data across locations for example, disaster recovery site can be set up a distance away from the production data center, so disaster scenarios can be survived by the recovery site. Extreme.io Metadata Aware Synchronous Replication leverages the Extreme.io architecture to provide the most efficient replication that reduces the bandwidth consumption. Extreme.io CAS architecture and in-memory metadata allow the replication to transfer only unique data blocks to the target array. Every data block that is written in Extreme.io is identified by a fingerprint which is kept in the metadata information. A non-unique data block which already exists on the target array is not sent again. Instead, only the block metadata is replicated and updated at the target array. Extreme.io Synchronous Replication is fully integrated with async replication, in-memory snapshots, and ICDM capabilities, which makes it the most efficient replication, providing zero data loss protection policy for critical applications and workloads. Sync Replication transmits host data to a remote destination site. Before acknowledging the right to the host, incoming data is being replicated immediately to the destination effectively creating a zero RPO solution. For the initial synchronization phase, and when the target is gets out of sync, the application is using the metadata aware application to effectively and quickly replicate the data to the targets. The replication is using multiple cycles until the gap is minimal and then switches to synchronous replication. This reduces the impact on the production to a minimum and accelerates the sync time. To avoid the need for a full copy or even a full metadata copy, Extreme.io leverages the in-memory snapshots capabilities. Every few minutes, recovery snapshots are created on both sides, which can be used as a baseline in case of a disconnection or a failure. When the connection is resumed, the system only needs to replicate the changes made since the most recent recovery snapshot prior to the disconnection. In order to ensure the best performance for the applications using sync replication, Extreme.io automatically prioritizes the I.O. of sync replication over async replication. Everything is done automatically and no tuning or special definition are required. The replication resumes automatically when the links are back to normal. Extreme.io synchronous replication is managed at the same location as the async replication and supports all disaster recovery operations similarly to async replication. Switching between async and sync is simply performed using a single command as we will see in the demonstration. Our demonstration will walk through the replication setup and creation process. We will be using two Extreme.io X2 systems running Xio 6.3. The systems already have replication ports configured. We will start in XMS on one of our extremer systems. This system will be served as the source. Click data protection on the left navigation pane. From this page, we will be able to manage all parts of a replication. Begin by clicking sessions and check the remote session option Click the plus button to open and create new replication session. We will choose the sync replication and select the CG 
I created in advance, which consists of two LANs connected to an ES6i host and formatted as VMFS6 data store. Next, we select the target cluster, which is in our case XBRIC DRM1633. Next, we define the target consistency group. In this case, we have two options available. If the CG already exists, we can select it. If it doesn't, we can select the auto pairing method to create the CG and the volumes at the remote site. In my case, I'm selecting the first option, which will create my new CG and two volumes at the remote site. Please note that mapping the CG to the relevant host at the remote site is required. Next, I can create or select the source and target retention policies, which define the protection window and the number of protection snapshots to keep in case we want to fail over to a specific point in time. Since the data is immediately replicated from the source to the target, we added this option allowing our customers to go back to a specific point in time at the DR site for logical corruption scenarios. In this example, I'm creating a source retention policy to keep six snapshots for one hour, one snapshot every six minutes, and then I can duplicate the source retention policy to the target site. Now, I'm selecting the source retention policy I've just created, and in the next screen, I click Duplicate Source Retention Policy to replicate it to the DR site as well. Next, I'm providing a name for my session and click Finish to create a protection session without starting the replication session or Finish and Start the replication session to replicate the data immediately. Within a few seconds, I can see that my session is being created and the replication is starting. Navigating to the remote array, I can see that the new CG and its volumes have been created at the remote site. Now all I need to do is map this CG to the relevant host at the remote site. The Data Protection Overview tab exists in the Extreme.io GUI for managing Extreme.io local and remote protection for both sync and async replication. In the Data Protection Overview screen, we can see a high-level view displays the status for all local and remote protections. Overview section includes the minimum RPO compliance for all local and remote protection sessions, protection session status chart, and connectivity information between peer clusters. By double-clicking on the session, we can see very important details about our session such as the replication direction, replication state and status, live bandwidth and efficiency metrics, and live graph showing the RPO actual versus required. We can easily change the replication mode of an existing session from sync to async and vice versa without affecting the application or suspending the session. You are invited to watch the second part of this demo, initiating a VMware site recovery failover based on the Extreme IO sync replication. I hope you will find this demo useful and thank you very much for watching.